In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Your people praised your great victory, O Lord. Wisdom opened the mouth that was dumb, and made the tongues of babies speak. Alleluia. Welcome to this service of spiritual communion at St. Michael and the Angels in Christchurch, New Zealand. I hope that the words that we say and pray together will be of comfort and guidance to you at this time. So in a moment of quiet, let us now bring before God the sins that we have committed by the things that we have done and the things that we ought to have done. Let us confess our sins together. Merciful God, we have sinned in what we have thought and said, in the wrong we have done, and in the good we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance. We have sinned in weakness. We have sinned through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry. We repent and turn to you. Forgive us for our Saviour Christ's sake, and renew our lives to the glory of God. Of your name. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Through the cross of Christ, God have mercy on you, pardon you, and set you free. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. God strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Father, you gather the nations to praise your name. May all who are reborn in baptism be one in faith and love. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. I would tell you to all be seated at this point, but I suspect you already are. Our first reading is uh, comes from the Acts of the Apostles. While the lame man who had been cured clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's, astounded. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our power, by our own power or piety, we made him walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up, and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One, and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith which is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that is, his Christ should suffer, he has, been, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, so that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, 
whom heaven must receive until the time for establishing all that God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old. Moses said, The Lord God will raise up for you a prophet from your brethren as he raised me up. You shall listen to him in whatever he tells you, and it shall be that every soul that does not listen to that prophet shall be destroyed from the people. And all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel and those who came afterwards also proclaimed these days. You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God gave to your fathers, saying to Abraham, And in your posterity shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God, having raised up his servant, sent him to you first, to bless you in turning every one of you from your wickedness. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm uh, this afternoon is, O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O Lord our, our Lord, how majestic is thy name in all the earth. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou dost care for him? O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. Yet thou hast made him little less than God, and dost crown him with glory and honour. Thou hast given him dominion over all the works of thy hands. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. Alleluia, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Praise and glory to God. The two disciples told what had happened on the road to Emmaus and how Jesus was known to them in the breaking of the bread. As they were saying this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and supposed that they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questionings rise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit has not flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still dis disbelieved for joy and wondered, he said to them, Have any of you have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. Then he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you, while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ the Word. Fantastic stuff. So this continues on from last uh, yesterday, obviously, the road to Emmaus, and we still stay with these two men who experienced this wonderful thing of uh, the action of the sacrament, the breaking of the bread, and their minds being opened, uh, their hearts on fire, as Christ spoke about uh, the Old Testament. Here he says, it says, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. We have this thing with Jesus actually explaining, or he doesn't say he explains it, he says he opened their minds to what the scriptures were. I've always seen this, this wonderful experience where 
those first disciples are there and Christ, just by his presence, is able to open their minds and they understand it all. Like one of those blinding moments of inspiration, like an epiphany, I suppose. A mystical experience where all of a sudden they can see the whole stretch of history and they are able to understand where Christ fits through all of the Old Testament. How lucky it would be to be one of these people in that room. We should be thankful here that it is because of the actions of these people in that room and their willingness to do this. The, thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance and forgiveness of sin should be preached in his name to all nations. This work that we do today, that the church continues, all starts from this room. Those two men on the road to Emmaus, their minds being opened, their hearts on fire with hearing the scripture, the knowing of him and the breaking of the bread. Those other people in that room when Christ just appears to them. It all comes from there. Us being able to share in this moment of knowing Christ in his word and in spiritual communion all comes from this part here. It is wonderful. It is a feeling of being connected to history and the universe all through God's only Son. What a wonderful thing. The other part of this scripture here is that I find quite interesting is that Luke, who wrote this, is obviously at great pains to tell us that Jesus was not a spirit, that he was in bodily form. This is a huge part of the resurrection. Massive amounts of theology has been written on this, of course. The saying, I'm not a spirit. You can touch my hands and touch my feet. I am real. But then you have this wonderful bit where he says, have you anything to eat? A very human response. They gave him a piece of broiled fish, which he took and ate before them. But he just appears in the room unannounced uh, what does it say Je Jesus himself stood among them and they said to him, and he said to them peace be with you I mean he just appears so the resurrected body is very different than the normal body but it is still a body all the same more on this as we go through Easter obviously this is a huge theme that will uh, guide all our readings and our prayers I do have one question for all of you, though, and please type in your answers, because I don't understand one thing here. What is broiled fish? I don't know. What is it, boiled or is it grilled? Is it a mix of the two? Broiled. I've always wondered this. And I see Jesus with a piece of fish in his hand, like a nice bit of, you know, you know obviously the fish has been quite white and tasty, but I don't know what broiled is. Please, let me know. Put the message in, and I'm really keen to find this broiled out. So you can help me. That would be wonderful. Well, thank you for putting up with my rant today. Let us now pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence that we share in your word and uh, word and scripture. We thank you that you guide us in all our understandings of what you have shared with us. We pray for your continuing inspiration as we uh, journey through your scriptures in this way. Let us now pray to the Lord who is our refuge and our stronghold. For the health and well-being of our nation, that all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For everyone who is isolated and housebound, that we may be alert to their needs as best we can and care for them in their vulnerability. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our homes and families, those families who are homeschooling at this time, all young people, and indeed all who are in any kind of need or distress. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are suffering of any kind of illness, be it of body, mind or spirit. We especially pray today for our brother, Bruce. Bruce. 
Heavenly Father, may your healing spirit flow through all of those on our hearts and on our minds. May your peace surround them, your love enfold them. May they not be afraid. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all your saints, those who have been the lights of Christ throughout all generations. That's particularly our patron, Michael, the Archangel, and of course, the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom we greet as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the peace of Christ be always with you. E te whanau, we are the body of Christ. By one spirit we are baptised into one body. Keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. We are bound by the love of Christ. While we are not able to have Holy Communion at this time, let us pray together for spiritual communion. In union, O oh dear God, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may ever be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. And let nothing ever separate me from you. Let me live and die in your love. Amen. You are a people God claims as his own, to praise him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Alleluia. Let us pray. Lord, may this celebration of our redemption help us in this life and lead us to eternal happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us here at St Michael and All Angels in Christchurch, New Zealand for this service of spiritual communion. I hope that these words of scripture that we have shared together today, the prayers that we have prayed together and our thoughts that we have shared. I can see them coming up on the, uh, on the screen, which is wonderful. Thank you for joining us. And I hope that you can join us again today at four o'clock where we will share an evening prayer. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.